It was a decade filled with lovable characters, insane situations, and outrageous laughs. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 sitcoms of the 1980s. I'm so excited I could leave a spot right here on the carpet. <laughs> Number 10, Growing Pains. Kicking off our list is the series that showed us just how hard it can be to raise children. Psychologist Dr. Jason Seaver and his wife Maggie, who is a journalist, try their best to nurture their family. However, Mike, Ben, Carol, and Chrissy just cannot stop causing trouble. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm bored. I have to go to the bathroom. I'm sick of this, I'm sick of you. Ah, that's the spirit. Tell me more, tell me what you hate. Number nine, Alf. The Tanner family discovers a furry and arrogant visitor from the planet Melmac. Unsure what to do, they name the alien life form Alf. As much as the wisecracking alien misses his home planet, he decides Earth has a lot going for it, mainly his new family and their tasty looking cat. Alf calling fat man. Come in your Buickness. Who is calling at this hour? It's Alf. You want to hear what I learned this week? No, I don't. Number eight, Night Court. Offbeat judge Harold T. Stone presides over a court that deals with petty and bizarre crimes. He's assisted by a motley crew of clerks and district attorneys who often create as much chaos as the criminals they bring in for trial. He does not speak English. Listen, you, I am going to take you in there. So just cut the chatter. <laughs> oh, no! Number seven, Perfect Strangers. Balki Bartokamus is a sheep herder from the small, fictional, Greek-like island of Mipos. He travels to the United States in search of his relatives. There, he finds and moves in with his cousin, Larry Appleton. Larry and Balki quickly discover that they could not be more dissimilar. Larry is panicky and businesslike, while Balki is sunny-natured and idealistic. However, they always come together to eat pig snouts and to perform the dance of joy. Now we are so happy we do the dance of joy. Number six, who's the boss? Former major leaguer Tony Maselli and his daughter Samantha move in with the uptight executive Angela Bauer because Tony has taken a job as her live-in housekeeper. Her family includes her shy son Jonathan and her mother Mona, who is a man-hungry vixen. Despite Tony's uphill struggle to fit in, he soon wins them over with his laid-back style. Of course, romantic tensions end up surfacing between Angela and Tony. And sometimes I love to take bubble baths. Really? Yeah. You in a bubble bath? Oh, I always pictured you in the shower. <laughs> I, I, I mean, <laughs> if, if I pictured you at all, I would picture your type yeah. in the shower. I, I, I got the picture. <laughs> Number five, Family Ties. In this weekly series, a couple of left-wing ex-hippies must learn to deal with raising children who have strong conservative views during the Reagan administration. The most vocal of their kids is the dashing young Republican Alex P. Keaton, played by Michael J. Fox. Sometimes I'm not as sensitive to all of you as I could be. No. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes I'm a little too self-centered. No. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I got that off my chest. <laughs> Number four, The Wonder Years. Throughout this series, an adult Kevin Arnold reminisces on his teenage years spent growing up in the 60s. Alongside his best friend Paul and his sometimes girlfriend Winnie, we watch him go from adolescence into adulthood. I'll never forget that look, the way she cocked her cute little head to the side as her eyes met mine. Very good, Kevin. Number three, The Golden Girls. This beloved sitcom sees four older ladies becoming roommates after a divorce or the death of their husbands. Dorothy's goal is to find a companion she can relate to, while her mother Sophia adds a comical outlook to events. Meanwhile, naive Rose brings a corny sense of humor, and Blanche manages to find at least one new man every episode. Throughout the series, the women advise each other on all aspects of life, usually over a slice of cheesecake. If that's the doctor, tell him I have no insurance and no money. If he still wants to come in, he just wants to see me naked. <laughs> Number two, The Cosby Show. Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable and his wife Claire are a happily married couple raising five children. As the children get older, the family gets larger. And to Cliff's surprise, they keep coming back home when all he wants is for them to move out for good. 
Hmm? I can't breathe. Uh, you have to understand, dear, that love hurts. <laughs> Number one, Cheers. Played by Ted Danson, Sam Malone is a former baseball star and the current owner of a bar. There, he is regularly visited by his friends as they gather to talk about their problems, laugh at each other's flaws, and be there when someone needs them. Cheers takes the top spot for being the most loved show of the decade and for being the one place where everybody knows your name. Hey, Coach, a few bottles of fields right here. Normally, I wouldn't use that stuff to shampoo my dog, but Sammy just sold me, Auntie.